بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome dear students We are going to take a step back to what we took in our unit which is unit 3 Now we are going to just focus on what we took and what is the main idea which is of course about the future Now we had our lesson which uh, is in our unit what will they think of next Our lesson was about Edward and his grandmother in the conversation part in our book now, in the conversation, we talked about using persuading phrases and how we can just apply them in our conversation by using these phrases, as you can see here. Now, we also talked about the real talk phrases or the words that we can use. So there is just an exercise here to just recall what are the words that we use or the phrases for real talk. Now, we can say, for example, that we have here, check out. How about this one? If you can recall this, if you want to just throw something away or to just get rid of it, what can you say? Now, just one word, which is ditch. And if something is given more uh, publicity or it is something that is hopla. And we have here carrying something very heavy. We say that it is legging as a verb. And if you do something with the rest of the people, we say that you are going with the flow. We also had the second part, which is to role play with a partner. Now tell your partner about something you used to do, uh, use or do, sorry, such as a kind of technology or a sport. Try to persuade your partner to try it. Use phrases for persuading. So as we mentioned, we had the phrases for persuading. And if you recall that I had the comparison here between the two types of messages that I can give you or send you. Now we have here the written type and we have the other part, which is the typed. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to use the phrases for the persuading. I'm going to either persuade you to uh, consider the typed message or to consider the written one. So I'm going to start with the first part, which is the typed. I can use the phrases in this context. Now you can see that I have the colored parts to show you what are the phrases used and the real talk also is applied. Now together we can read. One reason you should consider electronic messaging is that you can send and receive it at any time. Check out the many ways you can e-message Trust me on this, getting an electronic message is better because messages are carried around all the time in their devices, unlike lugging a piece of paper that may be lost. Also, one of the advantages is the ability to copy and save the message anywhere else, so ditch the paper and start e-messaging. Now this is the first, and you can see that I applied using, of course, the real talk and the phrases for persuading. I do have the other kind, which is the written. Now here in the written, I can also persuade you by saying, going with the flow isn't necessary. What is great about handwritten messages is that the personal touch that can't be felt electronically. Look at it this way. There is a human effect and it is closer to the heart than electronic words. I'm sure if you just give it a try, you'll find that the old traditional handwritten style still wins the heart. A messages are just hoopla. Now you saw that I used all the phrases that we have here in the book, and we also use the real talk. So it is easy to apply and just give it a try in your daily conversations by using persuading phrases. Now the other part that we took in our last lesson was about changes. What type of changes? We have the changes that we took concerning newspapers, which was the listening lesson. We talked about, uh, or we listened actually, uh, about the advantages and disadvantages of the three types that we discussed. Now we have the three types, the print, online, electronic. We listened to the information about newspapers and we completed our table. Now this is what we did in our last lesson. I want to show you uh, a script, which is actually the part that you listened to in our last lesson. So we are going to just read what are the parts that you can see. And by the way, we have here, if you can see that I colored the letter R. 
And you can see also at the very end that there is an ED that is colored. Now, does this remind you of something? So if we just read it together, we have here, for example, newspapers. We have also reader. We have portable, predicts, and stopped. Now, I'm hinting to what we learned in Unit 1 and Unit 2, which are, of course, the R sound. And, of course, we have the ED, which were the pronunciation lessons that we took in the past units. Now, this is a lesson for us to know that we can always practice. Even though that we have moved on with our units, you can still practice what you have learned and pronounce as much as you can. Now, we're going to move on to something else here. If you can uh, remember with me the difference between the vowels and consonants that I explained in Unit 1. Now, remember the word consonant. We said that there are differences between vowels and consonants concerning sounds. There is something maybe new called consonant clusters. Now, since we are talking about sounds and pronunciation, we are going to also talk about consonant clusters in our pronunciation lesson. So our objectives are to identify consonant clusters, pronounce consonant clusters correctly in words, and number three, differentiate between different types of consonant clusters. So we are going to focus on our new lesson here. We have consonant and clusters. So we know now what is the meaning of consonant. We are going to focus on the other word here, which is clusters. What are clusters? Now I'm going to show you some pictures here. You can see here these grapes. Now these grapes, we say that they are clusters. Also another one here, you can see that we have here flowers, which are also in clusters. And we have also stars. Now stars also can be clusters. Now in these three examples here, we know that consonant clusters, they are things, or sorry, clusters are things that are together. When I talk about consonant clusters, I am talking about letters that are together. So we have here consonant clusters may contain two or three consonants. So remember that I'm talking about consonant in clusters. We have here they can be in two or three consonants. Now be careful not to separate the consonants in a cluster with a vowel sound or add a vowel sound before the cluster. Now we're going to understand more. What is the point? What is the meaning of the consonant cluster? But now you just hang to the thought to that we have two or three consonants that are joined together. Now something very important we have here, just examples. You can see that we have here BR. Now both of them are consonants. Also PL in plan. We have the ST. We have the ST also. We have here SP and GR. Now I am going to go back and pronounce the words completely. I want you to focus on how I pronounce the word. And just put in mind how I am pronouncing the consonant cluster, which is in the red color. I have the first one. Broken. Broken. Now you can see the sound broke. BR, broke. They come out together. We have also plan. Now there is no way to divide between the two letters. We have here plan. They come out together. Also, we have here understand. Understand. We have street. Street. We have spray. And we have hungry. Hungry. Try to pronounce with me. Now you notice that we do not divide or we, there is no division between the two letters here. And they can be also three letters. Now this is something that we are going to also see here. Now all of these examples here, they are examples of either consonant diagraphs, which are two letters, or you have some tri triographs, which are three letters together. 
Now, just put in mind that these letters, as we read and as mentioned in the book, they are inseparable and they are pronounced together. So, back to the book we have here in the book, we have some consonant clusters that we're going to see together. Now, for example, we have the letter we have here, brought, brought. We have also great. We have, try to understand. Here you can see that we have here the S, T, and R together. So pronounce with me, industry, industry. You can see that they are together as a cluster. We have also stay. We have presence. We have present or present here. Newspapers could present. And we have here instead. Now also, there are other examples in the book. We have here print. We have number four. Electronic, electronic. Now you can notice that this comes out naturally. It doesn't, it isn't something that you have to work on or something that you have to put in mind. If you are just speaking naturally and you just let your pronunciation flow with you, it comes out together. We have also print. How about this one? Try to pronounce it. We have three letters together screen. We have also completely. Now actually we have lots of examples. Now we can see that we have for example predict. We have also stopped. Now you can see that we have lots of examples. Now we can see that for example we have here sponge. We have squirrel, swan. And in other ways we have here also skate. We have glove, plug. We have also drum, crab, block. Now we have other words I want to show you. You got the idea of consonant clusters and now you know that they can be either two letters or three letters together. We're going to see other words that have consonant clusters. You can see that we have here the word approximate approximate, two letters, chain, we have cost, how about this one, try to pronounce this one, extremely, we have also frequent, together, group, we have, you can see, lucrative, path, place, produce, space, and we have steep. Now, we pronounce these words together. We know that we have the uh, clusters in all of these words, but there is something else I want you to know. Now, these words are the words that actually are going to pass by us in our second part of the lesson, which is going to be the vocabulary building. So we are going to see what are the words that we have in the vocabulary building exercise, which is on your same page. So we're going to just see the words. We have here chain, commonplace. We have number three, estimated. We have lucrative. Orbit, we have rigorous, simulate, and steep. So these are the eight words or the eight vocabulary that we are going to discuss and learn together in our part. And you can see that also we have the meanings that we are going to match and identify together. Now we are going to start with our vocabulary building, which is on the same page, page 39. We have here the objectives of the lesson. Number one, to give the meaning of new vocabulary from context. Number two, to establish the meaning of new vocabulary in relation to their synonyms and antonyms. 
We have number three, answer questions and state the definitions. And we have number four, to form sentences using the new vocabulary. So we are going to start our new part of the lesson. As you can see that we have the meanings here. I'm going to read them with you quickly. We have here A, something that is extremely difficult. So you have an, if you have an idea about the words before, you can just now match, or if you can guess what is the meaning. B, a path in space followed by a planet, moon, or a spacecraft. So we have a path in space. How is this path? We have C, a group of businesses owned by the same company. We're not talking about one business, but a group of businesses together. We have in D, something that is very expensive. E, frequent or usual. What is something frequent or usual? Just pass by. Maybe you know it. We have F, producing a lot of money. So something, a kind of business or anything that produces a lot of money. And we have G, given an approximate cost. So we have here, do we know exactly how much is it? No, it is something that is approximate. And we have the last one, H, imitate. So you can just pass by and read the meanings and the, uh, the words and try to relate the words with the meanings that we have in the book. Now you will see these words in the reading on pages 40 and 41, match the words with their meanings. Now, as we did before, we read the meaning and it's up to you to try to relate. We have number two, to go through the meaning in context, which we are going to do together, inshallah. We have also to ask a classmate and discuss together. So sometimes you benefit from each other and to get hints from pictures, synonyms, antonyms, and explanation. So let's start. Now we are going to focus on the words. I'm going to start with the first word, chain. What is chain? Now I can show you a picture and say that these are different chains. This is also a chain here. But we do have something else. We can say that we have an example. There are a lot of restaurant chains that spread all around the world. So we do know popular restaurants and popular cafes and other stores. They have chains, not just one restaurant, that there are several restaurants that are in the same chain. So what do we know about chain now? We know that chain is a group of businesses owned by the same company. So if one store is a business, if there are many stores, it's going to be a group of businesses, businesses together. Now this is going to be the first one. I'm going to highlight each meaning when we finish choosing. The second word is commonplace. What is the meaning of commonplace? Now you can just think about it and divide it into two parts. Common and we have place. Now think, what is the meaning of common? When I say that something is common, it is well known. It is something that may be usual. So let's just make sure. We have here common. The synonym can be something ordinary or a routine. We have something also, nothing out of the ordinary. Now, for example, using social network sites and video sharing is now a commonplace. So I can describe, it is an adjective, to describe that something is normal. Now, if someone video chats with you, it's nothing that is out of the ordinary. So just focus on the meanings that we have here. What is the meaning of commonplace? We can see that it is, we have here, yes, frequent or usual. Moving on to the third word, we have the word estimated. Now, estimated here, we can see that we have this synonym something that is guessed. Now, if you notice that I said before, something that is not exactly given. So something that is guessed, evaluated, but not known for certain, we do not have a certain or sure answer for it. For example, the estimated profits this year are very high. So when we are talking about profits in a business, do I know exactly how much is the profit? No, but I give an estimated number. Also, for example, we can say that we have 
Yes, now we have here, for example, painting. Now, if you want to paint a wall or a, a house, sometimes you just give the estimated uh, amount of paint. You do not know exactly how much you need, but it is something that is close. So we have your estimate here, going back to the meanings. You can just revise very quickly, and yes, we agree that it is going to be G, which is given an approximate cost, approximate, not exact. Moving on, we have number four, which is lucrative. Now, lucrative is an unusual word that we are going to read in our reading lesson, page number 40. You can see that although up to now only very wealthy people have had the opportunity to be space tourists, this is something interesting, many see this as the beginning of what will eventually be a lucrative new industry. So it is something that is connected with business or industry here. So what do we say about lucrative? Something profitable, cost effective, productive, or booming. Do you remember when we talked about uh, Sheikh Salman al-Rajhi and we said that he started his business during the oil boom? So we are going to connect between booming as a verb and as a noun. Now, the oil boom is something that is positive. It had a lot of effect, okay, or it started business in the country. So, when you go back to lucrative, just to see the meanings here, which one do you think relates to the examples that I gave you? And we can agree that it is going to be, yes, F, producing a lot of money. Moving on to Number five, orbit. Now, orbit is a short, simple word here. Now, orbit, I can just show you something clear here. It is a circular path. Now, here, you can see that we have Earth. And Earth here, what does it do? It orbits around the sun. So we have your orbiting, not actually just Earth, but all the planets. So. Obviously, it's going to be B, which is a path in space, followed by a planet, moon, or a spacecraft. So we do have now the word orbit. Coming to number six, we have an unusual word. We have rigorous. Now, rigorous here, you can just see that we have it also in the reading. We can see that there is an American millionaire who paid 20 million to become the first space tourist now, this is something exciting to just read about, and we are going to read more about it in our reading lesson. But also, it is interesting to know that he had eight months of rigorous training. So is it easy just to go to the uh, space? No, we need training, not just any kind of training. It would be rigorous training. So when you go back to the meanings here, of course, we have the synonyms, which are strict, hard, or done carefully with a lot of attention. And also, I can give you an, another example and say like this teacher here. Now, he has a rigorous character as a teacher. Now, what do we mean by rigorous? Just to see the meanings that we have left, we have something that is A, extremely difficult, or D, expensive, or H, which is imitate. Now, we can see that the meaning is obviously extremely difficult. We have the seventh word here, simulate. Now simulate, from the pronunciation, you can connect it with one of the meanings that we have left. And to understand the meaning more here, we have the synonym duplicate. What is the meaning of duplicate or simulate or imitate? Here you can see that we have here children. They are dressed up as characters, as a fireman, as a doctor, as an engineer. Are they truly these occupations or they are just simulating or imitating? So here we can connect between them and we have simulate and imitate. Leaving us to the last word, steep, which is of course expensive. Now just to give you uh, the meaning here, we can say that traveling to space is a steep operation it costs a lot to prepare. Now, is it something that anyone can afford? 
Of course not. It is something that is steep. So we have here, these are our eight words that we took. Now we are going to study more or to read more about space and about tourism in space, which is an exciting topic that we are going to, inshallah, study in our reading lesson. But before, we are going to just relate and give more examples so you can, may not forget the words that we studied. Now think about funny or amusing examples, like skiing, for example. Now water skiing is a well-known sport. But if we think about it, just think that you are imitating water skiing, but where? In space. So I'm going to use the same words, the same vocabulary that we have here. Let's simulate water skiing. Imagine you can ski in space. You must need a chain to hold on and, of course, rigorous practice. So we can see here that if you are going to ski, you need the chain and rigorous practice. This idea is not commonplace at the moment, but everything is possible to happen in the future. It would be lucrative indeed. Imagine how the estimated price to do such a sport will be steep, but totally worth it. You can see that I use the eight words that we have in our vocabulary building lesson, and we are going to go by them, inshallah, again in our reading lesson. So let's just stop here, and we are going to go back and read about it more, inshallah. Our outline of the day is the pronunciation. We talk about consonant clusters. We now know that they may come at the beginning or in the middle or at the end, as we practiced. And we know that they may come as two letters or three letters. We have the vocabulary building. We had the comprehension to recognize the words and recall meanings. Then we moved on to knowledge, which is to understand from content and connect to synonyms. And the last part was evaluation, which was to communicate using new vocabulary and connect to the definitions that we had. Now we have our vocabulary building lesson is done. We are going to prepare for our next lesson, inshallah, which is going to be the reading. So be ready.